Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. Welcome back. We are going to continue our studies of part six, pitting corrosion, and the documents that we're going to do our commentary on today is called API 579.1. It's going to be mostly a reference to the 2007, but we also will allude to 2016. Uh, recall from earlier episodes that uh, these are pretty close. There are some differences in developments, about four or five percent, in my opinion, of the formulas, and um, and basically the big changes they've they've rearranged the appendices from 2017 to 16. But anyways, we're going to look at uh, 579-2 the problem manual, and, and we're going to add some commentary to add some more context to those examples. So we're going to go through example 6.1, and then we're, this is primarily focused on a level one assessment. So we're, as was alluded to in episode one, we're going to use the, the comparative figures or the diagrams to help us to characterize and classify the pits and then we'll use those to determine our remaining strength factor so and this is where we began and recall in our earlier chapters the, the allowable re, um, rely the allowable re, remaining strength factor is uh is a code comparison against the earlier chapter and what we're going to calculate the required and, and as long as the required is less than allowable, we're good. So let's let's jump right into this. Particular example, we have a cylindrical pressure vessel and it was constructed to boiler pressure vessel code. Uh, Section 8, Division 1, 1985. And it, it has characterized by widespread pitting inside, on the inside diameter of the vessel. And you can see the figure to the right. And uh, we want to perform, we're asked to perform a level one assessment. In the level one assessment, we want to utilize standard pitting charts and determine the maximum pit depth. This is the approach we need to take. So in addition to the photographs, they also have to measure the pit depth. So we, we, we use that information, we calculate the remaining strength factor, the RSF, and then and we do this, and we do a visual comparison between the actual damage and a standard pit chart. We try to compare them. And then based on the pitting chart, we determined the, the RSF of development here as we try to understand the problem more. So our assessment, we confirm that this vessel has been designed to a recognized standard so that we can use the standard RSF allowables to compare against what we calculate. And therefore, that's one of the rules required to do a level one assessment. And we, we, have, we don't have issues with creep, and we can refer to a table 4.1. And I think that's in the earlier version. And uh, we, have some we have to have tough material. So there, the material has to have some ductility. And there's no other damage, like other cracks. Otherwise, we have to do a multi-level type of assessment. So another one feature of this is there's no cyclic cycle, cycles in the lifetime. And these are all the criterion for um, level one. So then we continue on. We have the pitting damage is arrested. So we don't expect there to be an increase in the pitting damage. And there's no supplemental loads, only pressure. And those are the requirements for a level one assessment. Now, the API standard recommends that you 
one always goes back to uh, table 2.2 or a variation of it. And this is where we, we double check everything and we make sure we've got all the conditions uh, before we begin the analysis. We know it's a pressure vessel. We know it's a pre-1998 uh, nine, st study. So the allowables are, are lower. We have um, a, like the working pressure. We know that. We know the materials of construction. We know the temperatures, we know there's no cycling and, and we take a look down the list and, and our dominant is a part six, uh, pitting corrosion. That diagram we've taken and blown it up here. So you get your working pressure, your temperature, and this is all the information that we have for this particular problem. So let's continue to look at table 2.1 and we, we've organized all of our information and I do this uh, from my spreadsheet so to so I can enter my formulas but uh, you know the allowable stresses are, are are less because you know we're you know the pre 1998 99 specs we have a longitudinal and circumferential joint efficiency factors are shown here our, our diameters are shown in metric and imperial and uh, we are ready to continue. All of the critical criterion we need to do our study from the inputs, and this is part of step one, which is the official way of doing the evaluation. D, future corrosion allowance, TRD, or T nominal and the loss are, are critical to the doing the evaluation. So we arrange them and we put them together and here are results in, in Imperial and metric. On to step two, determine the wall thickness to be used for the assessment. And there's a couple of variations. You can use equation 6.1 or 6.2. We are using 6.1. So we take the T minimum, minimum minus the loss minus the future corrosion allowance and we get what we require. And so we can calculate a stress and it's 0.63 inches. Let's take a quick look at step three, determine location. First thing we have to do is take our diagram and determine our location of our highest pit density. And we need to use scaled photographs to determine our, our um, pit dimensions. And, and so there's recommendations in the standard for the size of the sampling. So in this case, this is the highest level of pitting that we should be concerned about. And you can see that the, this inspector has added a tape measure for scale. So, you know, it's not too bad. Now we can use, you know, tools like Blue Beam, for example, and we can scale those and, and prepare some interest, uh, some, some data to do some analysis. So let's continue. Now our inspector has also provided the maximum pit depth uh, W max in the region of the pitting to be evaluated. So we've chose the highest density of pit. Now we need to make sure that the inspector has taken the maximum pit depth in that region so that we can focus our study. And uh, sometimes you have to be careful about where they took that maximum pit depth. So in our case, uh, we get a pit depth of 0.3 millimeters, you notice, or inches, or 7.6 millimeters. Very hard to get the exact depth. And um, basically, if you want to learn more about it, it's in section 620. Now in step five is a bit of a screening process. So we determine the ratio of the remaining wall thickness to the future wall thickness in the pit region. So basically, we, if we use equation 6.3, if there's a criterion, so if our thickness, our RWT is less than 0.2, then uh, a level one assessment is not satisfied. So you need to meet this criterion bef before you, this 
level one assessment is a valid study. So otherwise you need to proceed to level two or three. So we have our level five. Let's look, take a look at this equation six, three. And recall that we need to satisfy this less than 0.2 criterion or you know, to make or greater than 0.2 to make sure this level one assessment is valid. So this is the equation that we use. It's it's equation uh, also referenced uh, there, and uh, it's shown as TC over the future corrosion allowance minus W max over TC, and we find that the level one assessments permitted. So that means we can continue on with our study. Step six, this is where we determine the MAWP, the maximum allowable working pressure for the component. And, and so we're, we can use Annex A and recall that the different versions of API 579 dash one have them in different sections they've rearranged them between the additions so here we go so we have a category type a type of calculation it's for a cylindrical shell so first we start with determining our inside radius and uh, we have no supplemental loads and then we, we determine our critical with that equation we come up with 30.12 inches ID or 765 millimeters. Now we go into the classic cylindrical circumferential stress and longitudinal stresses. And we'd have a couple checks one and two to make sure that the equations are valid. And basically we're going to be using the circumferential one and by determining the maximum allowable uh, pressure for circumferential, we get 307 psi or 2119 kphg, and basically that's it. And then that's how we determine our maximum allowable working pressure. Now we're going to continue here with our comparison using our comparison charts to classify our surface damage. And basically when, when we did the analysis and the API did, they found that the photograph most closely matches figure 6.4. In my opinion, this is quite uh, experiential and takes a lot of practice. And uh, the, you may make sure that a caution is, is that you, the, the figure, um, that you did this, that you match the scales because this figure that's shown to the right is, is 150 by 150 scale and make sure that when your photograph or your images match that scale so that you can get the pit size more accurately and, uh, you know, keep practicing that one. Once we get our figure matched up then we can part of that figure is a chart shown below here so we know rtw from equation 6.3 we calculated that earlier and we know we're a cylinder so let's go and determine our our uh, rsf factor as we continue here we're going to continue with step eight which is determination of the RSF. Now we go back to this figure again, and basically our value is you know 0.63, so we're in this range. So basically all we're using is is interpolation between 0.6 and 0.8, and then going across, and for the cylinder. And basically when we do that, we get an RSF of the exact answer by formula is 
some conclusions here. The first thing we want to conclude is we did the level one assessment, it met the criteria, and we it passed. So therefore, no repair is required. The second thing is, is we, we found, we know that the design pressure from the inputs we received was 300 PSI G or 2069 kPHG. And we know from our re remaining strength factor, we can do some back calculation, some iteration, and to find out how much room we have. And so our maximum allowable working pressure uh, re required is only is 307 PSIG or 2117. Now we can also use that in the future, for example, if we want to, you know, derate our vessel and consider how much life we would get in, in for the vessel uh, by using a very similar type of iterative process. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.